I think what keeps us all interested in playing is that it is rooted in, I think, songs that are often, you know, earnest and, you know, pop and and rock based. I don't. I, we're, I think we're we've managed to avoid being too stylized because mm. we we really just keep it real. So, what do you think of your brother's music? I enjoy it. I do enjoy my brother's music, and aside from the occasions where it's like 2.30 in the morning and I'm asleep and I hear the music, I'm very fond of it, it's good. I think one of the most rewarding things about doing music um, is that just having, having crafted an album that I think is as good as I think Kids is, uh, because, I mean, I, I've written albums before on my own in other bands. I've never recorded one, but I just, I mean, if I died tomorrow or, or if all of Sloth Bear died tomorrow, uh, you know, I would know at least that I got this one, you know, album out. Like, another big accomplishment was just, like, the forming of the band, which I think is always a hard thing to do, but just really hitting your stride in terms of chemistry with the band and I've never done it with anyone else and I mean maybe I will again I hope to be so lucky as to but uh, I mean it's I've tried playing in other bands like with other people since like you know not things I took that seriously but it's just it's not the same at all and I'm, I'm glad that I found that that balance with Craig, Doug and Ian. The best way to describe it is Doug Bleak, Josh Ginsberg, Craig Heed and myself playing in a room together with instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what the sound is. That's what the sound will always be, mm -hmm. unless one of us leaves. Everyone's almost always playing something. Mm -hmm. No one really drops out. I mean, I drop out here and there. Like, it's it's pretty dense um, because of that. But, like, my, again, my philosophy is just like, let's fit as much as we can mm -hmm. into this. And if it doesn't work on first try, then we're just gonna jam it in there and make it work. Really good. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Connecting. Yeah, I want to copy one of these suckers. That looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> In the vinyl sleeve. Yeah. No, this Sorry. looks great. This looks fantastic. I'm glad we did this. Yeah. Did I, need, I guess I looks need great. to get money. Yeah. I don't have any now. It's cool, but I need... 100 uh, bucks. 100 bucks each is the investment. Right. Buy one. Buy as soon as you can. Okay. First of the month. Or you're out of here! <laughs> well, we're just putting these together. Um, we have to burn the CDs, which I've done a lot of already. And then we have to affix them to the booklets using these plastic hubs. We figure we'd make um, the packaging ourselves. Put together these art booklets featuring art Craig did for a record for each song in order of the album. And now we're just doing the final assembly process so when we play our quote unquote record release show tomorrow night, we have uh, some fiscal copies to sell. Yeah, I like a lot of painters, so like Jackson Pollock, or like Van Gogh. I use a lot of things. I used some paint. Um, I use a lot of pastels, cutting out pictures that I printed out and putting them together, like collages and uh, use some stage blood and uh, lots of leaves. You ran out, you ran out of red? I just like the stage blood, mm. yeah, and uh, yeah, leaves and like flowers and dirt and um, confetti. I first heard about Sloth Bear from this Long Island Press article that came out in, I think, May of this year. And the first time I heard about them, I was very intrigued, not only by the fact that they were an amazing, great band, but they were also from my hometown, Valley Stream, Long Island. But Nana's officially opened, I think it was towards the end of June, was our first show. And uh, we actually, we wanted to book Sloth Bear for that show, but we didn't really know them too well at that point. We were actually a little bit nervous, like, talking to them. It's just a really good atmosphere. It's, it's like a hometown crowd. Everyone's rooting for us. It's, it's, I mean, before, before that, 
I could maybe think of one or two instances where people were just really enthusiastic about watching us play. I mean, usually involved people being drunk. Slot Barrel was a big inspiration for us, you know, opening that venue. <laughs> just because, you know, we thought that they were the most amazing band and, you know, we wanted to have them play with us and, you know, definitely just keep something really tight and together along out. But, yeah, now it feels like we have, like, this following, as small as it is, a really rabid cult of people who are into us and know our songs, and it's really exciting. I feel like they're, they're really tight. At least, um, Craig, Josh, and Ian came to my house one time, and they, uh, well... Josh uh, decided to rummage through my liquor cabinet and he got a bottle of rum and he, and he finished it and he was drunk in about 10 minutes and it was pretty funny. T to make a long story short, by the end of the night we were all belting out Maxwell Silver Hammer and we were listening to Abbey Road the whole thing but the only song everybody started singing on was Maxwell Silver Hammer so I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Alright, just their live shows in general really impressed me. Uh, their sets always flowed really nicely. They always seemed really prepared and in sync with each other. Uh, there was no real, you know, dicking around in between songs. They really knew what they were doing. So, that always really impressed me. It's a lot of local bands. They can be pretty unprofessional. They take forever to tune between songs. They don't know what they're going to play, but their sets always flow really nicely. Uh, I think the left turns they make are kind of decisions you wouldn't necessarily make in a rock band, and that's kind of cool. They have a lot of backing vocals and um, on one song they have bird sounds which I think is really cool. question is uh, being uh, a musician yourself what's the best thing about being a rocker the best thing about being a rocker I don't know if I could call myself a rocker yet what is a rocker you know you know you, you're doing you're doing what you love hopefully if that's what you love because uh, I don't really see anybody else doing this if they don't love it because uh, there's definitely a lot of bullshit you have to sift, shift through and uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff to deal with that maybe isn't the best in the world, but if it's worth it to you and you love what you're doing, uh, I, I guess it's a uh, labor of love.